Hello. Today, I'm going to show you how to use Cartograph, which is the tool which was developed with Joe to analyze game security. We are going to show you how to use it to create a map hack. Let's begin with some background. Cartograph is a memory analyzer that is designed to evaluate a game's security and exploit its memory structure. With it, we are able to build all sorts of hacks in a generic manner. For instance, we are able to create invincible units, have an infinite amount of gold, and of course, reveal the entire map. The main idea behind Cartograph is to analyze the game memory so that we can find, understand, and modify some of the game's key structures. For example, you can use Cartograph to tamper with the game's map structure or the unit list. Finding these key structures is not an easy task, because they are very small compared to the large chunks of memory allocated by modern games. For instance, as the graph shows, Supreme Commander 2 uses around 800 megabytes of memory. On the other hand, the map structure only takes around 1 megabyte, and the unit list only requires something like 1.5 kilobytes. Overall, important structures never account for more than about 0.5% of the game memory. To show you how Cartograph is able to find such a needle in a haystack, we are going to show you how to use it to create a map hack for Supreme Commander 2. Building a map hack is difficult because it requires understanding where and how the map is represented in memory, how the map visibility algorithm works, and how to tamper with its structure to gain an advantage in the game. Due to the difficulty of creating a successful map hack, it is not surprising that very few map hacks have been released. Before getting started, let's take a brief look at Supreme Commander 2 itself. Supreme Commander 2 is a real-time strategy game which was released in March 2010. As you can see, it is a pretty straightforward real-time strategy game. The gameplay revolves around building a base and units to eliminate your opponent. The game enforces visibility restrictions and accordingly, as I play the game, I am not able to see what my opponent is up to unless my units are close enough to his. Our goal today is to use Cartograph to remove this fog of war. For the purposes of this demo, we will assume that the map is stored in a 2D array because it is the data structure that is most commonly used to store maps in today's popular strategy games. This assumption makes our approach easier to demonstrate because 2D arrays are easy to spot when visualizing the game's memory. Of course, this assumption is not always true, and some games use alternative structures. Cartograph is capable of finding most standard data structures. For instance, it can find stacks, which are commonly used to store unit information, but we cannot demonstrate this right now due to time constraints. Let's start mapping! Initially, Cartograph will read all of Supreme Commander's 2 memory and take a snapshot. We start the snapshot procedure by selecting the Supreme Commander 2 process and then using Cartograph to take a snapshot of its memory by clicking on the Map Hack button. When this is done, we are ready to move on. Next, we are going to remove as many unrelated memory blocks from the memory snapshot as we can. We do this by playing the game without discovering the map and removing every memory block that changes from the snapshot during this phase. As you can see, we are trying to trigger as many memory block changes as we can by building new units and changing the viewing perspective. We then ask Cartograph to do a comparison between the game's memory and the snapshot we took in the previous step to eliminate any blocks that have been modified. In this step, we discover the map and keep only the memory blocks 
that have a different value when compared to the previous snapshot. This is the step that most dramatically decreases the snapshot size. Here, we discover the map by moving two units to the bottom right corner of the map. Now that we have discovered a portion of the map, we are ready to use Cartograph to do a comparison between the game's current memory and the snapshot of the previous step. And again, we can safely discard all the memory blocks that have not changed. This turns out to be a very effective step as it allows us to reduce the snapshot size from 493 megabytes to only 2.5 megabytes. At this point, we aim to remove unrelated memory blocks by eliminating any blocks that change while we are not discovering the map. This is very similar to what we did during step two. Notice that even though this step is very quick, it is still quite useful. In this case, it allowed us to have the size of the snapshot. Now that we have reduced our snapshot size as much as we can, it is time to visualize the snapshot so that we can find the potential map. We visualize memory using the following process. First, we select the snapshot we want to analyze by clicking on it. Then, we next click on the heat map button to make Cartograph generate a bitmap representation of the snapshot. In our representation, each pixel represents a memory block. The black void represents the compressed gaps between memory blocks. We call this visualization a heat map because each memory value is represented by a different color. Notice there is a shape that looks exactly like the part of the map we discovered earlier, near the bottom of the bitmap. We are now going to take a closer look at this portion of memory to see if it actually contains the map. Cartograph provides a convenient way of isolating a memory region. To isolate a region, simply select a starting address and an ending address by clicking on them directly in the bitmap. When this is done, you can click on the New Snapshot button to create a snapshot containing only the memory between the starting and ending addresses. Cartograph will then ask if you want to create a new snapshot directly from the game's memory or from the previous snapshot. Here we choose to do a snapshot directly from the game's memory so that we can see what our potential map now looks like. Let's press the heat map button again to see what this memory region looks like. We can also use the heat map zoom in function to get a clearer view of the memory region. And this zone definitely looks like a map, but don't let the visualization fool you. What seems to be two maps is in fact a single map that is misaligned. Now we will crop the memory region around this potential map and align it to see exactly what it looks like. Well, it seems that we have just found our map. Now that we believe we have isolated a potential map, we are going to test it by performing a differential analysis. The differential analysis is done by making a snapshot of the potential map and then comparing it to the game memory after a unit has been moved. First, let's make a snapshot of our potential map. Now let's move a unit. We are now going to perform the, differ the differential analysis by clicking on the diff map button. The blue color is used to indicate memory blocks that didn't change and the red color is used to indicate memory blocks that changed. The two red zones clearly depict the unit's current and previous position. Thus we are all now almost certain that we got the right memory zone.
Now that we have our memory structure, we need to understand how map visibility works. To quickly get an idea of what kind of values the map structure contains, we are going to perform a frequency analysis by clicking on the frequency button. The frequency analysis reveals that most of the map is filled with zeros and the rest contains values between 1 and FF. Accordingly, our best guess for revealing the map is to rewrite the zeros with ones. Now that we know which memory blocks we want to change and what values we want to put in them, all that remains is to patch the memory on the fly. To patch the memory, we are going to use Cartographer's Memory Writer, which is located in the upper left corner. Let's use simple mode to fill the map structure with ones. When we click write, Cartograph will spawn a thread that continuously rewrites the map's memory. This is done to ensure that the entire map is always visible regardless of where we move our units. Our map hack is now complete. You can see what happens in the game after we start rewriting the memory. I can finally see what my opponent is up to. Pretty cool, right? Cartograph can be used to create all sorts of hacks in a generic manner. Let me briefly show you another cool hack we can do with it on Supreme Commander 2. Notice my tank is never being destroyed. We would like to conclude by saying that all the efforts we are putting into developing game hacking techniques are meant to let us better understand the current weaknesses of today's popular games. At the end, what we really want to do is to create better defenses against cheaters. In the future, we want you to be confident that your online game experience is fair. Expect to hear from us about this in the upcoming months. Thanks again for watching this video, and if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to let us know.